Okay, let's go through how to write a program. Let's take a, a, a simple example here. Okay, so here's a, a simple uh, uh, problem statement here. Um, create a receipt for the customer, ask the cashier to enter the name of the item, that's one thing. Um, the number of items being purchased, that's something else, and the cost of the item. So we're inter asking the user, the customer, for, for three things. Then we're calculating the total cost and display all four pieces of information to the customer. So we're getting in three and we're, we're going to display, we're going to create one and we're going to display all four. So a, a pretty simple programmer. There's I, P, and O. There's input, processing, and out, out, output. Okay, so I'm going to show you one way to write it. It's not the only way, but it's a good way to get started. It's a model to follow. Um, so let, let, let's go through this. First thing, now analyze what and think about and write down what needs to be done. So you should pause now and think about that and pause, the per, pause this, this video and think about what has to happen. I've already told you, but write it down because you're gonna, we're going to use that. I'll pause for a second. Okay. Okay, so a good first step is to write down your thoughts and comments. Think about what has to happen. Don't think about how it's going to be coded. Don't think about how yet. How? Don't get ahead of yourself. You've got to think what has to happen first. Until you know what you're going to code, you can't really code it. You need to know what's going to happen. And then once you know what's going to happen, then you could have the simpler problem of how to code that. The what is the harder part. Okay, so let's take a look. Here's what, here's what has to happen here. We have input, processing, and output right here. Um, so we have input, get input from the customer, processing, calculate the total cost, output, display the receipt to the customer. So this is a high level, and that's probably fine. You start at a high level, big pieces, and then you're going to break it down. You're going to decompose the problem into smaller and smaller pieces. So here we have the, the basics. Now let's decompose it some. And notice it's already in IPO order. So hey, halfway there already. Okay, so what do we have to, have to do? We have to declare the variables. We said that already. So here are the variables, and we're getting in three values from the user, the name of the item, the number of the items purchased, the price item. Notice none of this is, is code yet. We're just kind of saying this is what has to happen. Input. What input we have to get? We have to get the name of the item. We have to get the number of items purchased. We have to get the price of the item. So, so we got all, all, all of these things there. Um, processing. What, what do we have to do? Multiply the number of items purchased by the price of the item. And we have to display all four items. We already talked about that already. So we, we, we've, you could write it down in comments like this so you know what has to happen. Now you know what has to happen. Um, and it, it's already almost almost code. It's almost finished. And, and I, like I said here, programming feels like magic when you approach it the right way. When you approach it the wrong way, you're trying to code it before you really think about what has to happen. It's really, really hard. But if you do it the right way, what has to happen first, and then worry about the how, it gets a lot easier. Because now we have the, these comments of what has to happen. Now, now we just have to convert that over to code. Okay, so let's see. We got declare string uh, name of item. So we compress the name of the item into a camel case variable name. Number of items purchased. We got that. Um, it's a real number, price of item, because you could, could have have a, a sense on there also. Input. We have prompts and input. So what's the name of your what are you purchasing? Name of item. Please enter the name of bought. Number of items purchased, please enter the price of the item, price of item. So basic stuff here. Um, so just we have a prompt for each input statement. Down here, calculate the total cost. I have to declare down here the total cost. I could have put that at the top. Either way is probably fine. The total cost equals number of items purchased times the price of item. So if I purchase four of them times the price of item, that goes into the total cost variable. Then I display the four things we talked about already. And there it is. There's the code. This is really similar to what we just said when we said what has to happen. Here's the code for it. And it was simple in order to write the code once we knew what we're trying to do. So that wasn't so difficult, was it? Okay, so the key to solving a well-defined problem is to ask yourself, what has to happen here? I can't, I can't emphasize this more. Um, it, it, it's, it's the key thing. If you can't answer this, if you don't know what has to happen, you can't code it. How can you code something that you don't know what you what is supposed to happen. So what has happened is, what's, what does the program have to do? So you can think at a high level, has to do this, has to do input, processing, and output. What's the input? We need to get, get three items, three values from the user. Oh, great, what's output? Output has to have four things we're displaying. Okay, great, these are things that what has to happen. Once you've defined that, the program becomes a lot easier. And yes, it is that simple. Unfortunately, too many students try to write code first without verbalizing clearly what the program should do and in what order. Once you just say what, 
the coding is super simple. And so the A students who, who understand this say the class is easy because it's it is. But if you don't do this, the class is really, really hard because you don't know what you're doing. You haven't answered the question, what has to happen? Okay, so as a bonus, let's convert the pseudocode to Java line by line. So this may be a little ahead of what we've, what we've done in class so far, but something you can come back to at a later time. Notice how similar the Java code is to the pseudocode. It's very similar. Okay, so here's the required Java bits for get input. So we have an import statement from the from the uh, uh, the Java utilities. Uh, we have a scanner, so we're going to that. This allows us. This is a program that allows us to get information from the keyboard into our program. We have main and inner main in the class. So that, that's the basics there. Um, so we're going to declare the variables. So I just copied over the pseudocode. Na declare string name of item. The string native item. There you go. In, in Java, Java, you just don't say declare, but there it is, same thing. Um, integer in Java, we use int, so number of purchases. Real is a double, so price on. So we're just translating here, pretty simple. Once you know what to do here, the coding is pretty simple. What's, what's real in Java? Double. Double will work just fine. Um, here's, here's input. So here's prompts, system out print line. What are you purchasing? Um, name of the item right, right here, keyboard next line. Um, another prompt, another... Uh, keyboard next int, then next double. So next line gets a string, next int gets an integer, next double gets a double. So these are things, how to do things. But once you know what to do, looking up how to do it is pr pretty simple. Okay, calculate the total cost. So here we got double total cost, very similar to the pseudocode. And look at that. We added a semicolon in, and it's the exact same thing as the pseudocode. Once you know, know that, it's pretty simple. Again, so here we have, have displaying. The receipt, system out print line receipt, system out print line items purchased plus the name of item, etc. So we've got four things we're printing, and that, that, that's the program. Um, I hope you see that as pr pretty simple. Um, so. Okay, so now, now, now it's your turn. So you just study the above example. Can you reproduce it now in pseudocode and then in Java? This is a, a practice thing for you to do. It's, it's a, 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 a uh, can you just implement what you just saw and what you learned? Did you really learn it? If you can't do this, you didn't really learn it. You just kind of let it wash over you. And uh, successful students don't let things wash over them. They grab it. They understand it. They, they understand the concept. Um, so here's, here's the problem statement. Create a receipt for the customer, et cetera. Three items, or three items coming in, four items being displayed out, one, one processing, right? So think about what needs to be done, put in pseudocode, and then add more detail. So you can do it. So here, here, here's my prediction. Students who earn an A in the class will, will do this um, for exercise. Students who will fail the class will not do this. Unfortunately, it's a sure, th sure bet every semester. I can tell you know, who's doing the work and who's not. It's really simple. If you don't read the textbook, I could really tell. Every teacher can. I could tell who's, who knows the terminology who doesn't. If I say a word, if I say pseudocode, and you're like, what? If I say variable, and you're like, what? Camel case. And you kind of look confused on your face. I know you didn't read, read the textbook. Simple as that. So you have to decide what kind of student you are. I hope you're a successful student and you do this little exercise and able to reproduce what we just saw. Okay, and see you next time.